the way I see UFC 300 is when, when it comes out, people are going to be going, holy shit, that's the first primo of the night? That's what UFC 300 is going to be. UFC 300, greatest, biggest, and most promoted tournament so far. We'll be announcing the 300 card soon, very soon. We have witnessed UFC 100 where Brock Lesnar finished Frank Mir in the second round by TKO. And right after that he destroyed Bud Light and probably even his wife. I'm gonna go home tonight, I'm gonna drink a Coors Light. That's a Coors Light because Bud Light won't pay me nothing. I'm gonna sit down with my friends and family and hell I might even get on top of my wife tonight. See you all later. We have also witnessed UFC 200, where again Brock Lesnar started, this time against Mark Hunt. And this time the interview was much, much, much sweeter. I'm so happy to be in here. One thing I do want to do, America, a shout out to the men in uniforms that protect and serve this country. From sea to shining sea, from one white boy to all nationalities. We gotta stand together, people! Unluckily, the fight was changed to no contest thanks to Brock Lesnar being juiced. By the way, I made underrated video about PEDs in UFC, where I mentioned Brock a lot, so check it out. What everybody's been waiting for. No main events or anything like that, but I will tell you April 13th. UFC 300, number two ranked Yuri Prohaska versus number five ranked Alexander Rackett. Former Bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling moves up to featherweight to face number seven ranked Calvin Cater and the return of Bo Nickel. He hasn't lost a fight in five. He's got five wins, all coming by finish. He's 5-0, and oh, and he is taking on Cody Brundage. Brundage's last four fights, his last four wins, have all come by first round finish. Tell me in the comments who do you think will appear at UFC 400. Let's count with me. 100 was in 2009. 200 was in 2016, 300 is in 2024, and 400 could be in 2031. My picks are Kamzat, Bo Nickel, Raul Rosas Jr. and Sean O'Malley. Now back to UFC 300. Everyone would love to see Conor McGregor fight after the long months he's been injured, but from a business standpoint, it's not that simple. But I've heard since that maybe plans are changing, so sometimes I feel like the UFC, because Conor is such a big deal, they try to f they try to find like the perfect scenario for him to fight in and i can understand from a business standpoint why you wouldn't want to put him on 300 because 300 is going to sell itself because of the pageantry of the number and whatnot so maybe yeah. if you put him on 301 you get two bites of that million buy apple if you get what i'm saying to me come on man connor's ready to go who knows how many fights he has left in him he's he's foaming at the mouth he's almost begging for a fight Put him on that damn card. However, UFC 300 can be saved by a bloody savage war. I'm talking about BMF title. Gaethje versus Max Holloway. If you're wondering why Max Holloway should fight for this title and in different weight class, we have expert Chelsea on to explain why. That the BMF title is going to be on the line. And I'll go a step further to tell you the BMF title had better be on the line. One thing that the BMF has not had is a lineage. And one thing we know about this sport is we will fiercely adhere to the rules that we make up on the fly. But I don't believe, even though we would have the ability to bring two brand new guys in and call it a BMF fight, I don't believe that's going to happen. I believe it will involve Justin Gaethje. If you got Gaethje and you got the belt, only one guy has called Justin Gaethje out. And Justin Gaethje hasn't called out anybody because he believes he's next in line for Islam, and he's willing to wait. He's willing to wait for Islam. Now, he's only willing to wait for Islam, not because it's Islam and not because it's the undisputed title. He's willing to wait for Islam because it's the title. Well, once you remind him, you have a title too, and we would like you to defend it, all of a sudden, all of that has changed. So now you must just defer back to simply who called him out. There's only one guy, which is Max Holloway. Another way to save UFC 300 is Israel Adesanya's comeback against Kamza Chimaev who has long since lost his hype train. In my opinion, this fight should be in the prelims because not many people care. Both of them have lost the hype, Izzy is past his prime and comes out at his peak in 2021. The guys at Full Mount MMA commented on this situation. Hamza Chemaev hints that there may be a fight between him and Israel Adesanya in the works. 
Today, Hamza posted this to his Instagram. It's a photo of him attempting to choke out Kamara Usman. The next slide is Izzy. In the caption, Hamza put a shushing face emoji. Izzy did an interview this week and revealed he wasn't actually serious about not fighting all the way until 2027. He says the fans can expect to see him soon. Life has forced me to take some time off, and I will, but you will see me soon. I said 2027, and the not they actually thought I meant that, but you'll see. Hamzat has been calling for this fight since April. Hamzat tweeted, now it's my time. Let's go make it happen, Dana White. Congratulations, Stylebender. See you soon. To summarize what we know about Conor McGregor and his participation in the UFC 300, we need to hear up Mastermind. You know why Conor McGregor, the sport's biggest star, will not be fighting at UFC 300? Do you know the answer as to why? Nothing to do with Usada, has nothing to do with Michael Chandler, has nothing to do with Conor and his training. Do you know why? Because it's not a title fight. UFC 300 will be capped off with a world title. Likely on that card, there's going to be three world titles. But the last fight of the night will be a championship match. So if you put Connor on the card, it means he can't be the main event. If you took your biggest star and you placed him anywhere on a card but main event you have demoted your biggest star that is why he can't fight at ufc 300. i'm giving you that scenario to get you to understand how important card placement is now Bo has been main card for his fights Bo was main event for both of his contender series. If you want to go to what everybody was looking for, if you want to go what all the media was covering, if you want to go to an athlete on contender series that Dana White was doing interviews about prior to the airing. So, without the ranking, without a pending title opportunity, it would seem, as long as he has, he has the most important thing, he's got the placement. If he goes at UFC 300 and we're going to play par for the course, right? We're, we're going to continue to bring in a guy, right? We're going to search gas stations, bowling alleys to find opponents. If, if, if that's what we're going to do, you're not going to be on the main card. And that is a massive problem that I don't think Bo knows. I, like, I don't think Bo would ever think, well, what do I care? It's a fight, it's an opponent, I want to do it. It's UFC 300, it's a special night. It, it matters, it matters, okay? Matters so much that they're not going to put their biggest star on their biggest show ever. What do we know about the legendary UFC 300? We see the BMF title, Kamsal versus Adesanya, Bo Nickel, but who cares about him? And we would love to see Conor McGregor, but he's minding his own business and the UFC hasn't interested him in a long time. Izzy Prochaska will fight Rakic, probably the most boring opponent yet, and the hated Algerman Sterling will fight a no-name opponent. I hope some decent fights and names save this card. Name me one fight that could save this card in the comments. I would appreciate it. And stay hard.